Hey guys, what's happening? So, got another one of these uh, Creality, uh, this one's a CR10, but it's the Pro version. And these are like, the these are super rare. Like, Creality may only made this thing for a couple of years or a year, um, but it's a very difficult printer to get parts for. And it's mainly the control board. It's right before they converted from 8-bit uh, to 32-bit. So it's an 8-bit board. I think it's called the CR10. Uh, it's the version 1 of the Pro. CR10 Pro. So the version 2... Well, the version 1 has a capacitive touch sensor. Whereas the version 2 came with a BL touch sensor. Um, so uh, the guy just dropped it off. And I'm going to take a look at it. So it looks like it has a dual drive, dual drive extruder here. Um, it's largely a 17 motor on it. Sorry for the background noise. Um, but yeah, the, the, the main thing is, see this ribbon cable? This is super, super rare. They only did this for a couple of years, maybe like a year or two. Then they got rid of that whole, this whole system with the ribbon cable. So, but the unique thing is, I'll turn it over, is that that ribbon cable goes straight into the motherboard. And if you got to find a replacement motherboard, they're expensive. I think the last time we replaced one was like almost a hundred bucks for the board. And they're actually going up in price because they're becoming more and more rare. Um, so flip it over and I'll take a look at it. But as far as I know, you just said the capacitive touch sensor wasn't working. And I gave him a link to, to buy a new one. One that I'd used in the past to get it going. But um, all right, let's flip this over and we'll see what's up. All right, so here's that ribbon cable I was talking about. The ribbon cable fishes through here, goes straight on the motherboard here. Uh, it's 8 bit uh, Atmel chip. And I, I believe this was ran as Trinamic drivers. So it had Trinamic drivers, but it was 8 bit. And the screen is even hard to find, too. So actually, I had somebody that uh, a voltage regular blew out on the board and it destroyed everything on its 5 volt rail. So it destroyed the motherboard. This, because this is fed 5 volts, it destroyed the LCD and destroyed the BL Touch. It was a version 2 of this printer, so it kind of destroyed everything. Um, but it looks like this is different. This is not stock. I mean, I've never seen this on a Creality printer. But I think he replaced this at some point. Um, Alright, so I'll flip this back over and I'm going to test, do some tests on the, the probe. Alright, because this is a capacitive sensor, it should pick up anything. It doesn't really... So if it's an inductor sensor, it would only pick up metal. Because it's capacitive, it should pretty much touch anything. So... Um, power this thing on. CR10S Pro. Yeah, version one is even—it's even hard to find the firmware for the version, uh, the version one. So, um, yeah, it's difficult. The firmware, version one firmware—it's difficult to find. Um, yeah, because I had one that was screwed up. So I had one that was—it was the sensor was screwed up, but because he thought there was something wrong with the firmware, he basically flashed the firmware and uh, with the version two firmware. Which is uh, different, it had to be all touch, so the pinouts were different. Um, and let's see. So, the issue with the other one I had was it was getting power, it was intermittent, but you weren't getting an end stop signal back. So, this will send an end stop signal back. So, if it's truly working, end stop signal will come back. And that, would, that basically what tells the, the motherboard that it's triggered. Um, so typically these things are anywhere from 6 volt. At 5 volt they're very unreliable. So really you should be powering these things with 12 volt. Then sending back the end stop signal. But but yeah, the same thing with everyone. So what will happen is... Right? So let me get my multimeter on it. So when I'm hitting this I want to make sure I'm getting a return signal. Alright, so... My probe is in here. So it is running 24 volts. Yeah, so to make these things reliable even though they say they can get down to 6 volts, 36 volts are usually, sometimes 5, I would never usually go, I mean, below 12. 12, I mean, it gets unreliable at some point. But this seems to be working, though. I mean, at least up to this board. See this right here? So I'm getting a, re I'm obviously getting a return signal back up to this PCB. It's weird, I can't find anything wrong with this thing. So I'm doing an auto level right now. So I'm getting the motherboard's getting feedback, and the firmware is correct. Because I'm doing the feed, it's picking that feedback. So I need to adjust the, the bed screws. They were a lot of wax, so I'm going to do that too. Um, 
Hmm. Maybe the offset? What is the offset? I don't know. It's, it's, it's such an odd this was such an oddball that it was really It's ox going. Oh, okay, alright. It's interesting how they have things different named. So I'm gonna go back and do a All right, so I'm gonna actually do a manual level here with the feeler gauge. If you want to do that, just put a feeler gauge under the tip, the nozzle, and you'd about uh, usually about point uh, point two millimeter, two 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 five, I mean the size of a piece of paper. You need to go back and do it twice. So a lot of times when you make adjustments, you know, it might throw off one corner, but you're doing a corner at a time. So I'm gonna go back and just double check everything each corner. All right, here's an oddity. Um, I don't know. Hopefully it's a right sensor on there. It's, um, it works perfectly. It's, it's totally, uh, reliable on the metal. But then when I try to connect it to the, um, when I try to connect it to the, uh, on the, with the glass bit on there, it becomes unreliable. So, I mean, unless it's actually an inductive sensor, but there should be a piece of glass. Um, oh, again, yeah, it was weird. I was like, what's going on here? So actually everything tests perfect with the metal on it. I'm going to do a test burn now. I went to go home. And home was one time. Well, it's probably going to be intermittent, so whatever it is. Okay, that looks good. goes back down and then it crashes right on the bed. Yeah, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that probe further down, maybe about a half millimeter, millimeter, just to make it more, I mean that's pretty far away from the bed, I just want to make it more reliable. That's a pretty big Z offset right there. See right there? I and mean, that's a, I mean that's a millimeter, is that, I mean, I'm bring this down. You don't want to bring it down too low, I mean this could have just gotten thrown off. Um, because if it's too low, if you you start having part curl, like if the edges start curling on a part with overhangs on it, it's going to whack that thing. It's going to whack the probe. That's why I don't want to have it too... I'll do this off camera, but I'm going to bring it down about right there. I think that might have just been it. So I think I think in the probe, just the set screws got loose and that probe got pushed back in there. Um, so the true test is the glass. Okay, let's see, we're not talking about this. Obviously, runs. Uh, I don't know if this ran Marlin 2.0 or Marlin 2.0 or. Um, I mean, this is right at the. This is right when Marlin 2.0 came out. So, let's see what it says. Nah, uh, yeah, that doesn't really say version 1.7. I don't think it's, you don't know if it's 1.7 Creality's version 1.7 or if it's Marlin 1.7. All right, so I forgot. There's a lot of issues with Creality and their SD cards. Sometimes if the file name is too long, um, or you have certain characters in there, it won't pick up on these screens. Not all Creality printers, but just definitely an issue with this Pro showing up on the screen. Um, all right, so let's do a print. Okay, that looks weird. Hold on, cards are cube. Calibration cube. I'm hopefully can adjust the offset in real time. Okay, let's see. Okay, adjust. I'm gonna put that back down to zero. Actually, what I need to do is, um, I need to do a bunch of script layer lines and dial in. I'm gonna cancel this print. But I want to make this zero because I don't know what it is. I want to start from scratch. You know, since I was saving the offset, I forgot. But one thing that I hate about the Creality boards, the original, I'm not sure if they ever fixed it or not, but. Um, well, I know they're converting with a clipper. That's not an issue, but the EEPROM, none of these boards actually have EEPROMs on them. So when you would save a configuration change in Mar a Marlin configuration change, you would save it to the SD card. So you have to constantly be using the same SD card because it actually has the Marlin settings on the SD card in the file. So it's definitely 
a headache. Um, it's pretty much annoying. That's it. Okay. Um, and make sure the Z is zero. Okay, good. Then I dial it in as it starts printing. Yes, yeah, so I did. I'm doing actually 40 skirt layer lines outside of the cube so I can adjust it down. But I wanted to go back to zero because I don't want it to grind in the bed. Yeah, I did a test print. Got the dial on the skirt. The offset was negative two. So originally I noticed that when, the, when I got the print it was negative 97, but um, it could be, I mean, it was a different SD card, so I don't know what it got. I mean, also, it was the original save one, but like I said, there's no EEPROM on the board. So, alright, so I'm doing 40 skirt layer lines, I got it dialed in. I just want to make sure that this thing extrudes correctly. I just want to make sure it works before I give it back to somebody. It's always a pretty annoying when somebody has to bring the printer back. It's pretty rare because I'm pretty thorough usually. Um, Yeah, because I've actually had one of these where the actual, this, uh, I don't know if they call it Capricorn tube, this blue tube, you know, was somehow frayed and, sh and shredded inside. And there was chunks of it inside the actual nozzle, clogging the nozzle. But it was intermittent, so it was weird. I tried to take the whole nozzle apart. It was like a nightmare printer. That was, everything was wrong with it. Um, Alright, we're looking good. I'll come back when it's done. See how it looks. I forgot how slow these slingers were. So I'm doing 50 millimeters a second. Um, yeah, because you have that big massive weight, you know, that you're going back and forth in the bed. It's hard to control growth you know, on the y-axis. Um, all right, so, I mean, 70 is pushing it. Usually 60 is okay, 70 is definitely, you're gonna get some growth in 70 for sure on the y-axis. All right. Well, I guess that's the end of this video. Look okay, like everything looks good. So, I mean, it's a stock printer, so it's just, I mean, it should be pretty dialed in uh, for the speed that it's at. So, um, all right, cool. So, yeah, I wasn't really kidding when I said I fixed hundreds of 3D printers. <laughs> um, all right, guys, cool.